Welcome back. My name is Sammy. This is Unicorn Dust Designs. If you're new, welcome. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I am an avid crafter um, and I like to try a little bit of everything. I am not opposed to like trying new things, showing you mistakes. Look, you know, let's just have fun. That's what crafting is supposed to be about, right? So let's hop into this video. I have no idea what I'm crafting today, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be great. Start off, I wanted to show you guys this because this week I, you know, my head has just been foggy with all the sickness and the moving and I was just lacking inspiration and couldn't figure out what I wanted to make. So as most of us do, I went on Pinterest and I started scrolling around and I saw this beautiful piece, Never Walk Alone, and it gave me the this like almost romantic, moody vibe and it definitely touched my soul. It definitely got me thinking of, you know, how I can make this my own and make more from this inspiration. So I just wanted to show you this because this is how I came up with what I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to take this frame. It is from Walmart. And you guys, you know how I'm like, oh, I've been doing so good, not buying multiples. I bought two of these. They were like 80% off after Thanksgiving. And now I'm regretting not buying more because they're a pretty decent size. Anywho, we're going to go on the back and I'm going to tape off the inside of the back of the frame because I don't feel that needs to be painted, but I do want to paint the back of the frame part. I'm going to take um, ink by Waverly. It only needed one coat of paint. I'm going to do the entire thing black. Like I said, what was awesome about this sign, so if you do see these like seasonally and they go on clearance, the the sign itself was had like a, a texture to it, but the lettering wasn't raised and it wasn't engraved. So when I painted over it, you didn't see any of the lettering, which I find to be the case most of the time. So this was actually nice. I didn't have to sand anything off, just painted it. Now I'm gonna take these IOD transfers that I've had for quite some time and i am going to take one page off now what is awesome about transfers y'all is you don't have to use them how they're recommended on the back of the book you can make them your own by cutting them out layering them on top of each other and i am definitely finding that the more that i play around with the transfers the more creative um, i'm getting with them and the more comfortable I'm getting using them as well. So right here, I am trying to find a piece that fits properly. I didn't want anything covering the entire sign because I did want to put like a little quote on there. So what's nice about these is that they have the grids on them. So I wanted this to sit flush with the left side and the bottom side. So I go in and I'm going to line this up and then I realize, uh, you didn't cut it straight on the bottom. So I'm going to use that grid and I'm going to cut a nice straight line. And now this will sit flush and fit perfectly where I want it to. Now, I'm only gonna go through the directions one time on the transfers for those of you that might be new. So the carrier sheet has a little, little tack to it. So it should cling a little bit to whatever you're adhering it to. I do wanna note that after I painted this ink, I did spray my sign with a clear matte by Rust-Oleum. Now I'm putting my transfer on. It comes with this little scraper tool in the envelope and you are going to scrape or push down on the image. And what I like to do is get that carrier sheet and kind of lift it as I scrape. If anything is left on your carrier sheet, all you do is you put it back down and you scrape a little harder. And I love using these transfers because it is such an easy way of bringing something to life and just adding so much detail to a piece, which I love. Now, after we fully put that transfer on, we are going to take that carrier sheet and we are going to burnish our image. So we're just rubbing on top of this and we are basically almost like pushing it into our sign, making sure it's not going anywhere and nothing, you know, chips away. Now, I do want to know what I should have done after I put that transfer on was clear it with that matte clear by Rust-Oleum to make sure that I sealed that transfer in. However, I moved on to my wax um, 
I'm using the Gilded Wax by DIY and I'm just gonna put that on the beaded frame and then the like outside pieces as you can see right here. I'm not gonna put it anywhere else. I just wanted the focus of the gold to be on the outside rim. Now Brie told me, once you put the wax on, you can't put a clear over it or else it'll turn into like a tacky mess. So note, note that. Now taking my IOD stamps, I love this these letter stamps because it comes with three different fonts. I am using my kitchen mat. I already put my little quote down on there. And I'm gonna take my metallic folk art paint. I brush it onto my sponge paintbrush and then I'm going to dab it on to my stamps. Now I usually don't have the best of luck doing the paint method on my stamps, but what I learned here was after dabbing on my paint, I flipped my sponge over and then kind of just dabbed off super lightly the excess. Cause what usually happens to me is it like smears or it, um, what it, like expands almost when I push it down and then it makes it hard to see the lettering. So I'm gonna place that down and I'm lightly, lightly putting my fingers over this. I don't wanna push down too hard cause I don't wanna smear that paint. And then as it lifts up, look at that. I was so happy. And this shows, as I keep saying, practice makes perfect. Keep trying and keep trying now when you use paint on your stamps you need to wipe them away a uh, wipe it off immediately especially because i was using an acrylic paint wipe it off fast now i'm going to blow dry that bloom with grace so that i can put in that missing little o right there bam bloom with grace isn't that beautiful you guys I love how this turned out. I love the lettering. I was almost going to go with vinyl, but I felt like the my glossy vinyl kind of cheapened the look of this. So I went with the stamps, was happy I did, and this is how it turned out. So moody and romantic, and I... You know, I kind of want to keep everything. If you guys ever see anything in here that you're like, please add this piece to your website, let me know, and I might just go about putting things for sale on my website that way because a lot of the things I want to keep. Okay, all right, you guys, okay. So as most of you guys know, I moved into this house a month ago um, and we have been sick for the entire month. So I have not had an opportunity to unpack my craft room. So we are working with whatever I could get my hands on, whether that be scrap wood that I don't have to cut, Dollar Tree items, my IOD stuff, you know, anything that was in my bookshelves I have. And then I've unpacked a couple of like actual boxes of my craft supplies. So y'all gotta just work, work with me here, okay? And um, hopefully we could get this place turned around soon. But I hope you're digging the DIYs in today's video. As usual, I hope they are inspiring you. And I hope that you guys are having an amazing week here. And and you all know the drill if you're digging me if you're digging the diys if you are digging this channel then make sure you like and make sure you comment comment is the way that youtube knows that you're liking this and then they will share it to more people and i need you guys to press the subscribe button okay and the like button and you just press the things down below because as i've mentioned before there is such a high percentage of people that watch but don't actually subscribe and i'm like hello why not? If you're watching the whole video, come back for some more. Okay. All right, let's get back in. This piece I got at a current um, thrift haul that will be on my vlog channel tomorrow, actually. And what I didn't realize when I thrifted this was it's completely uneven. And of course, since my garage, you guys have seen that is a mess. I had no idea where a rubber mallet was, so I could not adjust the... Um, the uneven factor on here. So I'm probably going to keep this for myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it. And once I can find that, then I will fix it. I also want to note that as I'm, so I cleaned this off, then I brought it downstairs and it was still sticky. It felt like, you know, your kitchen cabinets, like that greasy. So I took it back upstairs, got Dawn dish soap, cleaned it off and realized somebody had put like a wax over it. And that's what was like 
gummy on here. So I cleaned it the best I could and then I did a really good coat of shellac on this. So this is what shellac looks like after it's done. Shellac creates a barrier to block any stains from coming through your paint. So it looks glossy, but don't worry, it does not make your paints glossy. So taking that ink once again, I am going to apply that over my tray. So you guys, I watched Sonnet's Garden in Bloom. I've mentioned her before and she always uses like this, uh, almost looks exactly like this brush, my folk art synthetic brush. And I'm like, why would she use that on detailed like pieces? I always think to use my bristled brushes. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to give it a try. And I actually like it. I do. It still gets into all the details and um, I feel like it's just a smoother application too. So I'm glad I tried it. And I do want to know, that having the shellac um, as a like a base or a primer first, it helped move this chalk paint so nicely. Like the, the application was so smooth. I don't know, you guys. Anyways, we're gonna paint all of that. Then taking that same page of the transfers, I am going to make my own little design with it. And I knew that I wanted to use the bird. So I cut the bird down to size, made sure that it was sitting flush with my bottom seam over here. I'm not gonna explain how I did the, you know, the rubbing on the transfer, all that stuff. Now I'm gonna take this flower. I'm gonna slightly, I know I wanna overlap it, and I'm gonna take my box cutter and cut right at that seam because I don't want to take the carrier sheet off and place it before I cut it because that little piece will stick to like that top notch. I hope you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. So again, I'm gonna take my scraper tool, scrape it, pick up the carrier film, and this will kind of overlap right over that bird's tail. I do the same thing again. I take some of the leaves that had come on the flower, but I wanted to position them a little bit differently. And it's really nice because it all flows together. It looks like the image is one piece. And that right side of the tray, I felt like was missing something. It would have been really cool to put like a gold kind of like font or like little saying, I don't know. But I decided to go with this little piece of greenery like coming out of the side. And I thought it really tied in this whole piece and like i said as you start using this transfers you really get um more confident with trying different things like the layering and putting your own kind of design together which i think is such a fun part of these transfers now I'm taking that gilded gold wax again. And at first I tried to apply it with my finger to get more just like on the scroll pieces, but it wasn't really working out for me. So I ended up just getting the stencil brush, dipping it in the wax, and then I'm just dusting it over. Um, I don't want to fully put the gold wax on the inside of the tray, but I do want to coat the entire outside. And remember my links um, for where I get my DIY products and my IOD products are in the description box. And now I'm just gonna take the excess, whatever was left on my brush, and I'm gonna put it over the inside of the tray just so it gives it a light dusting of shimmer in there and ties it all together. And y'all look at how stunning this is. I don't even feel like I would use this as a tray. Like I can see using it in, as a tray, I guess, but like, I almost see it as wall art. Like I have it on my mantle right now and I think it looks absolutely stunning. I cannot wait to show you guys like the end result of these three uh, DIYs. So really quickly, I wanted to show you, this is what I've been using. So the matte clear by Rust-Oleum and then clear shellac. And I prefer the spray shellac, but they also have a brush on one as well. Now I'm taking these candlesticks. These were also a recent thrift find. Like I needed more candlesticks in my life, but I couldn't. They were $6.99 and they're like so tall and they weigh a good amount. Anywho, I'm taking that folk art synthetic brush once again, the ink. I think you guys are seeing like a little theme here. And I am going to paint this entire candle, um, candle holder, candlestick, 
it would be a candle holder, right? Because the candlestick is a candle. I don't know. Um, and you guys can see where, see how there's like the green and the yellow? This candlestick, I'm gonna say a candlestick, it has like a lot of texture almost. It looks like a cement that has been chipped away. And I was banking on using that detail when I applied the next step. So I am taking that gold wax and I did spray the black with a clear matte spray paint before doing this step. I'm taking a chip brush and I'm dipping it in my wax and then I'm stippling it on. And I'm trying to use, you guys can see like those raised, like the raised texture on the candle. I'm trying to use that as like a guide to where to put these, but then I kind of just go rogue and I, I start doing my own thing. And I'm not necessarily trying to make this look like a marbled piece or anything like that. I am just going with the flow and, you know, turning it around as I'm doing it to see where it looks best. I really like the stippling um, of the chip brush because it almost like fanned it out a little bit on the edges so it didn't look very like nice and crisp on those lines. And you just have to be free with it, you guys. I think when we put too much thought into something is when it goes wrong. You just have to have fun. Like this was very therapeutic. Um, Everett was downstairs with me and he was making a sign for his dad for Christmas. He was right next to me and I was doing this and Everett, it was so funny. He was like, mom, he goes, we can get really into this, huh? This is nice. And he was even like, I like your candlestick. It looks, some, he, he said, it looks like an old piece that you would see in a movie. And it was just so cool working downstairs with him. But just have fun with it, you guys. That's what it's all about. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. If this is in your home and you love it, then you show it off and be proud of it. And you guys, this is what all three of the pieces look like together. I'm obsessed. I am absolutely obsessed. I am definitely going to leave this on the mantle downstairs in my craft room. Um, I might even move it upstairs during um, Valentine's Day. This isn't even Valentine's Day. I mean, this is all year long, but I love the details in the candlesticks. I love the transfers, the black with the gold, with the vintage books. I'm just all about it. Please let me know what you guys think. I know these are quite different, but um, definitely feeling the moody vibe here. So let me know what you think down in comments. And y'all, I appreciate you being here with me. It's Tuesday. We haven't hit Christmas yet. So happy holidays. Enjoy this time. Take in the moments and um, make sure you tell the people that you love, that you love them this holiday season. Bye. You still have a crush? Yeah. On Violet? Yeah. Yeah? Probably not. I don't know. For two years, so she talked to me. <laughs> I was dead. That's kind of how girls work. Stink.